and uh, I think it's going to be amazing when Frozen 2 finally is released. Also, Spider-Man 3, got my first look at that. Really excited about Spider-Man 3 with the controversial conclusion of Spider-Man 2. And Ghostbusters Rebooted is going to feature a female cast of Ghostbusters for the first time ever since the 80s, uh, when the bulk of the original cast were made up of male actors. Now, we're changing up in 2015-2016 with female Ghostbusters taking on villainous adversaries. That's going to be very interesting to see the females going up against the ghosts as opposed to the original male cast. I know there's been a lot of conversation about that one as well. Ted 2 also expected to hit theaters over the next couple of weeks in theaters. Transylvania 2 Hotel uh, Transylvania 2, that's going to be a big one. And we're going to have remakes of the Peanuts in 3D and Fraggle Rock uh, from Jim Henson Productions. Really skeptical on Fraggle Rock because I think that some classics should never be attempted to be turned into remakes. And uh, Fraggle Rock going to be following in the footsteps the pattern of the Muppets, who had two theatrical releases released ever since at least 2012, the Muppets movie and Muppets Most Wanted, the sequel, which didn't include Amy Adams, who I was a really big fan of in that. And now they're going from the Muppets out of Fraggle Rock. I'm not sure if it's a Disney production. I would assume it's a Disney production because both the Muppets and uh, Fraggle Rock, of course, were productions from Jim Henson and Jim Henson's rights. Uh, were bought out by Disney a number of years ago, so I would assume Disney is having a hand in this, and the Peanuts movie to be released this Christmas in 3D, I don't know. You know, I remember reading the Peanuts comics, and I remember, you know, watching the original Peanuts cartoons uh, with Snoopy and Linus, who was one of my favorite characters. Uh, they were very energetic characters. Some were more mellow characters, and to see them in 3D, I really don't know. And in other musical news, we have R5 and Victoria Duffield teaming up for a Canadian tour. There were a lot of Canadian dates posted on the official websites of both R5 and Victoria Duffield. They are very excited to be coming to the East Coast. And I am even more excited about this because I love it when Disney stars and potential stars of the future in the music business like Victoria Duffield, who has produced a lot of great hits like Shut Up and Dance With Me and Break My Heart and this new one called More Than Friends recently, uh, which focuses on social media and timelines and internet relationships. They're teaming up uh, for a Canadian tour, and I'm really excited about this for updates and to find out if it's coming to your neck of the woods. You can go to websites like R5 and Victoria Duffield's official website for more info on that. Really excited about stuff going on all throughout the summer of 2015. We are in the midst of Easter weekend. It's going to be fun this weekend. Of course, the Easter Bunny uh, coming to town. Happy Easter to everybody of 2015, and thank you so much for spending so much of your Easter weekend with me. I'm your host, Jonathan Clark, and this week on our show, what I have for you, we're talking about dream matches again, and this week what I'm talking about is Goldberg versus Ryback and how I feel about this match potentially happening. Uh, we have seen so many dream matches happen over the years, or at least to have been attempted to happen in WWE, like Goldberg and The Rock from 2003. I go back to that one. We saw the John Cena Rock uh, duplex, which we saw at WrestleMania 28 and 29, uh, the double feature, if you would. Uh, so many dream matches. Now, the next one that could possibly happen before Sting and Undertaker could be Goldberg and Ryback. Now, if this match were to happen, here's my opinion on this match, simply put. It would just be a way for Goldberg to return and come in and run through somebody, and Ryback would just be the victim of Goldberg, and then Goldberg would go on to achieve something more greater in WWE, unlike he did from his first run in 2002-2003. The thing about Goldberg's first run in WWE is that it let so many people down. I was one of the people who were let down because of Goldberg's initial run in WWE. I thought he was going to come in and run for the competition. He did for the first little bit, but then he started losing matches to people like Triple H, like Sting recently did at WrestleMania 31. And God knows how pissed off I was in the fallout of Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania 31. More pissed off at that match's fallout than any match on the WrestleMania 31 card, I think Triple H is an absolute piece of shit for how he got away with beating Sting. Uh, never been a fan of Triple H and never will be even more so now that he came out of that one with the victory over Sting, which I didn't see coming. And I didn't see the involvement of the NWO and the Generation X in the capacity they were involved in. That could have been left out of the match. Uh, so I hope... Uh, that if Goldberg does come back, they don't run through him uh, like they did in the past years of Goldberg's WWE career from at least 2003 to 2004. They got, what, about a year and a half 
of Goldberg and with how WWE kind of ran over Goldberg when he came in the first few months they gave him pretty much everything he wanted as they were doing seemingly for Sting and people have come in as WCW alumni over the years and they kind of tried to back off of Goldberg and had him start losing matches to people like Triple H and that ultimately led to Goldberg's departure from WWE as it did Brock Lesnar when the two of them had their final match against one another with Stone Cold Steve Austin starting both of them out of the WWE at WrestleMania 20 back in 2004. We haven't seen Goldberg in WWE since. There's the photo of Ryback and Goldberg that was done off here when Goldberg apparently interrupted Ryback. That was taken by Sky Sports, a fan in the UK. Uh, he's been making appearances off of WWE television, and it's going to be really interesting to see if we do see Goldberg kind of resurface uh, in WWE, but I don't see it happening with how they ran through Goldberg, and so many people were disappointed, along with fans also, WWE upper management and executives were really disappointed about Goldberg, and when you have executives like Linda McMahon and Stephanie McMahon really disappointed in the direction of Goldberg, you don't really have much to hope for when it comes to returns or something being done with their characters down the road. Now, with how Sting was ran through by Triple H at WrestleMania 31, I can see more conversation coming about on social media, especially on Facebook and Twitter, really exploding because now some other WCW alumni will come in to pick up for what happened to Sting and the NWO and how they were treated at WrestleMania. But I mean, you know, that sort of thing can be expected because fans out there, there were millions of fans out there of Sting. Everybody thought Sting was going to win. I was not alone uh, with my prediction of Sting winning the match. And then he loses. And I'm upset. I go into a state of depression and this cloud of depression has not lifted over my head. Uh, and doesn't seem to be going to be lifting over my head anytime soon. So that's to be expected. You know, people are going to predict that a WCW invasion will occur. But, I mean, I've said this so many times in my column in this corner with Jonathan Clark. I go back to that quote Vince McMahon dropped in a promo he dropped on Raw shortly after purchasing WCW back in 01. He said, WCW is buried and will remain buried. And I believe that is a legitimate fact. If anything ever legitimate was said that came out of the purchase of WCW is the fact that it was buried and it will remain buried. They tried to resurrect ECW, but how long did that last, from 06 to 2010? That lasted about four years, and they replaced it with NXT, something more promising in WWE. I'm happy they got rid of the watered-down version of ECW, and if, in fact, they did resurrect WCW or a possible NWO Black and White or NWO Wolfpack reunion uh, was the fallout of WrestleMania 31's match, between Sting and Triple H, it would probably just be a watered-down version of the WCW Invasion, even from 01 or the original WCW, that fans would probably be very irritated over because they'd expect names to be involved with this feud. Uh, that wouldn't be involved. I mean, people would be wondering, you know, where is Lex Luger? Where is Hulk Hogan? Where is, uh, where is uh, The Giant? Uh, where is Scott Norton? Where is Kevin Nash and Scott Hall? Where is Sean Waltman? There would be a lot of questions about the WCW Invasion, and, you know, people will be expecting Sting to do something, which probably obviously he would. There'd be a lot more letdowns uh, with this, probably just as many letdowns with that as there would be with Ryback and Goldberg. So, you know, to say that, you know, this match between Ryback and Goldberg is going to happen in 2015, that would kind of be a far-fetched prediction uh, for me to make. If anything, this match will happen before we see Undertaker and Sting, but it's not going to be happening anytime soon because I don't see WWE headed in that sort of direction with the Ryback character. Right now, uh, Ryback seems to be very happy with what he's doing in WWE. He's not a current champion. Uh, he's not being, you know, overworked in WWE, and I think he's really enjoying not getting that main event level spotlight handed to him all the time as he was back in 2013. So I don't see them picking up anything with Ryback anytime soon. You know, that feud with the authority firing Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and various other individuals, uh, you know, that seemed to be very, you know, putting uh, Ryback in a very pleased position, if you would, and I thought he was happy uh, with his role in WWE. So I don't see them picking things up uh, for Ryback anytime soon. And as I said, you know, my prediction stands and pretty much remains the same about Goldberg versus Ryback. Goldberg would pretty much just run through Ryback, and that would just signify his return out of WWE, and he would go on to do something far more greater. Uh, the next dream match I do predict seeing, though, could be something like Goldberg versus Ryback. Uh, but if the two matches are ever debated as to what's going to happen next between Goldberg and Ryback and Undertaker and Sting, you know, the more I think about it, the Undertaker and Sting match probably could happen before Ryback and Goldberg or any other potential dream match because uh, the Undertaker-Sting match got a lot of response uh, after WrestleMania 31, especially in the follow-up. For those of you that caught Sting's interview on the WWE Network, I posted it on our Facebook page. For those of you who didn't, with all the things we're talking about, 
on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ETW Entertainment. One thing to note about the Sting interview with the chance of Undertaker, uh, when Sting was questioned by Renee Young, an individual who I've worked with in the past on the Canadian show Aftermath, that discusses the fall of the Raw and SmackDown and the WWE every week on Sportsnet 360, originally the score. Uh, she posed to Sting. She said, you know, what is your future in WWE if, in fact, he had a future, was questioned by Renee Young. And he said, you know, he really didn't know uh, what his future was in WWE, but whatever WWE threw his way, he was going to reach out and grab it. And if they didn't, it was just unfortunate in his mind. But fans were chanting Undertaker. And Jerry the King Lawler made a very interesting comment in the commentary that he provided with Byron Saxton. He said, you know, did you hear that, Byron? The chance of The Undertaker. We know that The Undertaker and Sting match is something that wrestling fans want to see. But the question is, the underlying question and probably the underlying issue is, will we see this dream match before we see something like Ryback versus Goldberg, or will this come first? I really hate how WWE, you know, tease us these dream matches on the WWE Network or the app. You know, they tease it with the confrontations between The Rock and Goldberg, or The Rock and Brock Lesnar, or Batista and Brock Lesnar. But we never, ever see these matches. You know, I go back to when The Rock in front of Brock Lesnar couple of weeks before the Royal Rumble back in 2014. You know, that match was teased. The Rock was apparently going to be coming back to win the title from Brock Lesnar. They were going to go one-on-one, whatever the case may have been. I saw the footage uh, that 